Hi, my name is Heather Davidson. I'm a lead naturalist at the Environmental Nature Center. Today we're in the chaparral ecosystem and we're going to be learning about the different adaptations that the various leaves have for this ecosystem. Now the chaparral ecosystem is mostly comprised of really short, dry shrubs and in this ecosystem it doesn't rain that often. So um, these leaves actually do lose water through a process called transpiration. So we're going to be pointing out the different adaptations that the various plants have in order to hold on to as much water as possible. Our very first plant we're going to be learning about is our laurel sumac and these plants have leaves that kind of fold like almost like a taco. So if you're imagining um, a tortilla laying on the beach it's going to get a hundred percent of the sun but if we fold our tortilla into a taco see how I've created shade on the inside of my hand this is going to help cool the leaf down so they don't lose as much water through transpiration. Let's go to our next plant. Here we have our Coast Live Oak, which has a very cool adaptation. These leaves have a waxy coating and it sort of uh, acts as if it's a layer on top of the leaf to help seal the water inside. So think of when you put chapstick on your own lips, it helps to keep water from evaporating from leaving um, your lips to help keep you your lips moisturized and um, keep it from getting too dry. So the waxy coating does the same thing for this Coast Live Oak. This is our California sagebrush. Notice the color of these leaves, really light green. Most of the leaves here in the chaparral ecosystem are a really light color compared to leaves, say, in the rainforest because it's really hot and dry here and light colors actually reflect the light away from them, whereas dark colors absorb that light. So being a lighter color in this hot and dry chaparral ecosystem helps to keep the leaves really nice and cool and they don't lose as much water. Pretty cool. This is black sage, and if you look very, very closely at the leaves, they have tiny little hairs. Now these hairs act as a sunscreen for the leaf. Imagine my dad was out here with us. He's bald. His, the top of his head would burn crazy because he has no hair to help protect his scalp. Luckily, I have a full head of hair still, and so my scalp is gonna be protected from the sun. The little hairs on these leaves help to protect the leaf from getting sunburned, and it also helps to protect it from being eaten by smaller insects or um, animals who might try to disturb the leaves. So this is a very cool adaptation. This prickly pear cactus has a very neat adaptation. It's standing straight up, sort of pointing towards the sun. So if you imagine laying completely flat, you're once again exposed 100% to the sun. And if you tilt yourself, oh, uh, point it towards the sun, it creates more shade on your hand. So when the plants are pointed up towards the sun, it helps reduce the amount of surface area exposed to the sunlight. Next time you're out in nature or even in your own backyard, take a closer look at the different leaves. And I want you to think, why do they look like that? What sorts of adaptations do they have to live in their individual environments? Thanks, bye. The Environmental Nature Center provides a tremendous service for our community. Free public access to nature, environmental education, and a sanctuary for our community to escape from life's pressures. The ENC depends on income from programs to fund our operations and to pay staff. The recent school shutdowns will result in a considerable loss of income for the center. Please consider becoming an ENC member or making a donation. Any amount helps. To donate, please visit encenter.org. Thanks.